Welcome to IOD's Paint Inlay 101 video. Now you may be wondering to yourself, what exactly is an IOD paint inlay? I'm so glad you asked. It is a brand new patent pending product. It is not a decal base transfer. It is not decoupage and it is not a stencil. IOD paint inlays are a brand new patent pending concept. They are made of proprietary materials formulated specifically for our people. In fact, they are made of real artist quality paint. You are literally embedding a painted design into your wet coat of chalk style paint. When it's time to remove it, all that's left behind is your beautiful painted design in a buttery textural surface. How adorable is this compact little cabinet? I'm gonna show you step by step. We're going to put our inlays on this little thing and it's gonna blow your mind. When you get your IOD paint inlays, you're going to remove them from the cellophane packaging and you're going to have a front cover a back cover with your instructions and in between you have eight sheets in this case with the rose chintz eight 12 by 16 sheets each protected with a additional tissue layer the first step we're going to take is we are going to trim them it's pretty straightforward but to make it super easy what i like to do is use a cutting mat a straight edge and a rotary cutter. Line that bad boy up. And boom. And then I continue that around all of the sides. You'll reference your packaging on the back where all the instructions are. And as we can see here, there's eight sheets, four of these and four of these. Those are going to seam together like this. The other two are going to line up and seam this way. You'll notice that there's grid lines on the back side of your carrier sheet. And this is so that when you're laying out your sheets, you can get an easy trim line. So for example, I'm gonna start from the bottom up. I'm gonna plan this for just the face of this piece. And as you can see here, it stops short of this side. So what I want to do is take my next sheet and line it up and see about where we're gonna get to. So right here on that nearest vertical line is where I'm gonna trim that to. And I'm just gonna take a pencil and mark it. Now is the fun part. As you can see, I've already base coated it. In this case, the same color as I'm going to be laying my paper into. The trick here is you wanna work in 12 by 16 inch areas and you want it just thick enough so that it doesn't dry out before you lay your inlay into it. Okay, so we've got this coated, it's still nice and wet, and we are going to start on the bottom using this as our line. You'll note that we're gonna miss the bottom feet, but that's not a big deal, we can fill those in later. The goal here is to make really good contact. Get it really embedded into your paint coating. I like to go over it with the brayer. And 
And then I like to mist it just a little bit with water or a lint-free damp cloth. And that's just helping you really make good contact in that layer. You see it kind of gets translucent when you get it wet. You also notice that I went right over these hinges here. So what you're gonna have is it's not going to be uh, right up against it, but if you wanna trim that, in fact, I can show you how, so that you get right up into that, you can. There we go, and then just press around it. I am going to just double check, make sure my paint is nice and wet. And I'm even going to get right up to it here. And even if it overlaps a teeny bit, that's okay. So you are lining this right up in here. And remember, it's not the grid lines necessarily that you're trying to line up. It is the design itself and how it lines up. I really want great contact in the paint layer. going to let it sit and as soon as it is dry then we're going to go to the next step of removing the carrier paper. This will take probably around an hour to dry depending on the conditions. You want to make sure that it is pretty dry at least dry to the touch because that's how the paint embeds it really becomes one together. this is all dried and you can tell because it's back to its kind of opaque color and it's not as translucent as it is when it's wet and you can just feel it. We are using a nice damp cloth to evenly dampen the surface. You don't want to overwork it. Okay, we are just going to begin gently peeling it down. You do not want to tear your inlay. If you find that you're having to tug harder than you should, or that it's tearing, or that just needs to be dampened a little more, go ahead and dampen it, even mid-pull. However, be careful not to touch the area that's not protected because remember, that is active and you will smear it. Any seams that are visible in your finished piece actually add to the character and charm, much like authentic gold leaf or the paper dominoes of France. But what's cool is that because your inlay remains active until it's sealed, you can actually go in and touch up or blend or do all kinds of artistic effects. Here's a great spot to demonstrate. Let's just take a little bit of water 
and we are going to spritz it. We don't want to go too heavy because we don't want it to drip. We just want to dampen that spot so that it can soften and kind of get that pigment mobile. I'm gonna let that sit for just maybe half a minute. Then with the damp brush, we're going to go in. We're just going to gently move some of that pigment right across that gap. You're just bridging that gap and moving some of the pigment so that it blends it. If there's any seams that are standing out in a way that you don't care for, just go on in and blend them. Once your design is just as you want it and it's thoroughly dried, it's time to seal. Today, I'm using a water-based top coat. Now, because this is active, I don't want to brush directly on until I've set it. So what I've done is I've actually taken 50-50, one part of the top coat to one part water, and I've put it in a little spritzer bottle. I'm going to go on and I'm going to just get that initial set with this so that after it dries, I can brush it on and I don't have to worry about moving the pigment around. You can also use an aerosol type sealer for your setting coat. I just love the fact that this I know is completely compatible because it's the, literally the same finish. However, there's plenty of sprayable finishes that are compatible with brushable finishes. As always, test your sealers in an inconspicuous space if you're not sure. Now, because the IOD paint inlays give you a naturally, inherently distressed and slightly chippy look already, there's no need to go in and do additional distressing. However, if you want to, now would be the time to do that. After you get that initial set, but before you put your final brushed on coating. So I'm just gonna take a sandpaper and I'm gonna go in on some of the corners and I'm going to give it a little bit of a distressing and overall the whole thing just a light knockdown. Okay, with a clean dry cloth, I'm just going to wipe down the dust. All right, let's go ahead and get a nice seal coat painted on. Now you will notice that the color deepens, much like many of your favorite chalk type paints, as you seal it. And that happens with both wax sealers as well as the liquid top coats. And you'll get slightly varied looks from each. So you wanna try different things and see what you like best. You don't want to overwork it because remember, that was just kind of a setting coat that we sprayed on. And then we actually went back in and did some distressing. So not all of the pigment is encapsulated.
So this little lady is all sealed and ready for her new home. But wait, there's more. Remember I told you to set aside the spent carrier sheets because we're gonna use them again? Here's why. We have the spent sheets here. And as you see, unlike before we used them, which had no color in the background, these actually now will transfer some of the pigment from our first application on the other project, which is so cool because depending on how you use them the first time, that can give you all kinds of varied effects for your second time. Softer, worn, more distressed. So that we've got this beautiful uh, kind of aqua color blue that's going to add an, just another dimension to the project. So as you can see, that's kind of a big deal. You can get usually two, sometimes three, and once in a while, four uses out of your IOD paint inlays. Just like with our first application, we want to get a coat on here that is just thick enough that it stays wet long enough for us to get our inlay placed. We are going to lay that bad boy right in there. And notice that there were some holes because we had cut through on the hinges on the first project. Don't even worry about it. When this is all together, you'll see how all of those elements actually work together for a deliciously charming and distressed result. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and apply to the sides and then we're gonna let it dry so you can see it come alive. Okay, let's let this dry thoroughly and then remove our carrier paper. Okay guys, this little lady is ready to remove the paper and reveal the new finish underneath. You don't want to overwork it, so if you need to pat it on, the point is just to get it nice and damp. Just like the other one, we're going to do a initial set. Sprayed on setting coat all dry. We're gonna do a little knockdown before we do our brush on coat. Okay, while we wait for that to dry, let's see what happens when we try to get a third use out of this paper. Using this little ginger jar, we're gonna apply it just like we did before, you know the drill. 
we're going to do all the same steps, allow it to dry, and then remove it and see what happens. There are some different curves on this, but because the paper is pretty flexible and even has a little bit of give to it, you can kind of form it over those shoulders. Through the magic of video, we skip right to the fun part, and ooh la la, look at that gorgeous imagery. And this is the third use, guys. One of the most beautiful things about the IOD paint inlays is the rich textural results that you get. However, if you want to, you can manipulate the amount of texture that goes into your surface. And one of the ways you can do that is by pre-moistening your sheet on the back side, not on the front side. So what that does is it pre-expands the fibers so you get less um, expansion when you lay the sheet into the paint. So I'm going to demonstrate right now. We've got it, taken a sheet of our indigo floral. So I'm gonna make sure and turn it over so that it's face down. And I'm just going to spritz the whole thing. Not super heavy, I just want to really get it to grab some of that moisture, not have it puddled or pooled. Another way or another thing that affects your movement and how much texture is how thick your paint goes on. The thicker your paint is, the more of the uh, kind of wrinkling you're going to have in your paint surface. I love that look, but it's good to learn how to affect and influence how much of that you have. Working with a damp inlay is a little bit different than when they're dry because you don't have that stiffness. In fact, if you have two people, that's super helpful. If not, what I do is I drape it over my one arm, um, being sure that that's on the gridded side, so that I can support it while I use my other hand to kind of place it and smooth it. And then you just go in and smooth it, but you'll find there's not as much of the wrinkling because, like I said, you expanded it before you laid it into the paint. So much of the movement that typically happens in the paint has already happened. I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of a wrinkle down at the end here so that I can demonstrate. Let's go ahead and brayer it down and get that wrinkle down so I can show you that you can kind of fudge it a little bit. Let's get in here, and I apologize for the camera wobble, but I wanna show you close up that wrinkle, and then watch how you can just kind of pull it out. If you get it right in the beginning before it's really set up, you can move and kind of fidget some of the little wrinkles, and it's really quite forgiving. You can see there, and there's a little bit of stretch to it as well.